Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibet for Monday, June 25th here in the Gulf of Mexico. Here is Debbie. You can still see with the naked circulation, in fact, more naked than yesterday. Thunderstorms even more removed from the center than they were yesterday, and the pressure has risen overnight by about 4 millibars, and the winds have died down. She was a strong tropical storm yesterday with winds up close to 70 miles per hour, but she has since weakened. And uh, as we talked about yesterday, the wind shear has not really let up over the storm. It would take more time for this to happen, and she would have to be farther west for it to do so, and she is not. She's staying in the eastern gulf, and you can see drifting east north east and since yesterday the track has changed to over Florida which we'll talk about in a minute and also cold upwelling in the northeast gulf here due to the long time she's been sitting in the same general area she's probably upwelling colder water and the data buoys confirm this with four to five degree Fahrenheit drops in sea surface temperatures since uh, Debbie got up in here so cold water and uh, wind shear are probably affecting her so convection has been limited now near the core for the last 12 hours or so though there's still a lot of rain showing up near Florida and Georgia and flooding has been a big problem in Florida um, and it will continue to be a problem as these rains continue at least as long as the convection continues developing on the eastern side of the center once she moves over there's not a lot on the back side as you can see and she will probably not be much of a problem once she moves over the peninsula but she's going to be taking her sweet time moving over this area and she will be around with us for quite some time yet here are the forecast models and you can see the vast majority of them are now clustered east northeast across the Florida Peninsula. We've gone since yesterday from most of these being into Texas and Louisiana to now shifting back the other way and uh, we've had the NHC forecast itself even have to shift all the way from Texas to Florida now and they'll have to shift farther east they're still going to the panhandle this is going into the peninsula so a lot of shifting has been done uh, in the models over the last day or so and uh, we'll still have to watch Debbie when she comes across Florida here uh, because uh, some of the models try to stall her a little bit and the Euro still tries to make this a strong hurricane out over the Gulf Stream in about a week's time but due to the orientation of the ridge still out over the plains and the trough over the eastern seaboard this is not a concern for a second landfall at this time and she would likely be taken out to sea by this pattern but still interesting to watch for restrengthening on the other side and the possibility for a brush of rain uh, to affect the southeast coast as she moves out but we now here's the current 500 millibar chart uh, for uh, North America and the reason uh, that Debbie down here is moving east instead of west is because of uh, this ridge over here uh, too many height rises over Texas heights are too uh, high over here for this to be brought west and uh, this trough coming into the northeast is in fact strong enough to pick her up and this is indeed a fairly big victory for the GFS model which was adamant on this idea from the beginning and uh, was opposed by the European and every other model really in the book and then the original NHC forecast as well and of course my forecast was adamantly that this would turn into the northwest Gulf of Mexico this has turned out incorrect the forecast in general for Debbie has been a mixed bag it's been, a, been an extremely difficult steering forecast in the short term in, in the long term I had uh, development in the Gulf of Mexico being talked about since two weeks ago uh, and being the possibility of an Allison type rain event for the Gulf Coast and uh, that has verified but the track uh, in the short term did not and uh, this was a tough steering forecast probably the toughest we will have for the rest of the season we had the models still split and going the wrong direction as soon as 24 hours uh, before the fork in the road and uh, this is just a testament to how amazing the weather can be and how difficult it can be for even our sophisticated computers to forecast uh, but in general the lesson I think to take away from this is when you want an early season system to get caught under the ridge like this you can't have this kind of amplification you can see the trough over the west coast digging really deep uh, all the way past southern California here notice how sharp the ridge is over the plains and then the trough correspondingly coming into the eastern United States when you have these ridges this sharp Notice how it's elongated north to south here and, is in, and is, in, is in general meridionally aligned. This is not conducive for the storm getting caught underneath the ridge. What you want is for these ridges to become flatter and more banana shaped and then you can get this to come back and become a cutoff flow and come westward and get blocked. I should have seen this before and uh, this was the error that was made I believe uh, that caused Debbie to go east and follow the GFS again a good victory for this model the euro kind of failed bringing this into Texas we will see if the bias 
uh, for that continues later into the season. It will be interesting if we get another storm in the Gulf to see what the, the battle between those two models occurs again. Uh, but in general, Debbie's forecast was difficult, but uh, lots of rain is going to be the story uh, from her for the next couple of days. She'll be moving across Florida and uh, in general will not be a huge danger to anyone else after the rains let up in that area. Now if we look at the Atlantic here, notice that it's pretty quiet in the deep tropics away from Debbie, and this is a function of the MJO starting to move away from our area of the world right now, still in phase one, but starting to move away, and most of the upward motion got taken out of the pattern with Debbie's uh, circulation. And uh, this will probably turn into a quieter pattern overall for the Atlantic over the next uh, couple of weeks at least, and a good chunk of July may actually go by without any kind of a threat for storm development and perhaps even the entire month. It's difficult to keep this level of activity going. And remember, Debbie was the first real tropical development that we had actually coming out of the Caribbean here. Actually, from the Central Caribbean was a tropical wave pairing with a monsoon low. Uh, so the first true tropical development of the year is this storm. And uh, the three coming before it, Alberto, Beryl, and Chris, were all of subtropical nature when they developed and don't really count in terms of the overall season activity. Although this is the fastest season start ever in the record books, it's mainly due to these little systems that spun up up in the central Atlantic uh, that were not of true tropical origin. So in terms of true activity, Debbie's our first storm, which is fairly typical in late June here, and El Nino years generally have an early start uh, up here in the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. So this is not unexpected, and the El Nino is now taking a firm hold. So expect the deep tropics to become a little bit quieter overall uh, um, through July and into August. And remember, this season is still going to be near normal. Uh, perhaps the numbers will be inflated slightly because of the three storms we had early of subtropical origin. Uh, but in general, the activity this year should be slightly below normal to near normal when we count it up at the end because of the El Nino that's developing now and the fact that sea surface temperatures are a lot cooler in the Atlantic than they were during the last couple of years. When the MGO comes back around to the Atlantic, which may not be for several weeks, if not a month, uh, then we will uh, eventually have another opportunity for tropical development to occur. The MGO is fairly a fairly crucial factor to have early on in the season until we reach August. So without the MGO's support, it may be uh, that we wait for quite a while during July before our next opportunity for development. But as soon as we have such an opportunity, you can be sure that you will hear about it here. And uh, we will be monitoring, monitoring Debbie while she's still exists. She'll be around with us for several days. Will be something to watch as she crosses Florida for flooding potential and then the potential for re-strengthening on the other side. But again, the pattern should take her out to sea after she clears Florida. So we will be watching her as she uh, continues to affect the southeast and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.